So Podcast 8, what up? How's it going? We're back again. It's going pretty good. <laughs> you want to just talk about the, the 800-pound gorilla in the room already? <laughs> Stefan, Steven with a no, PH. No, there's two gorillas in the room. We got... Oh, this gorilla? The food? Oh, <laughs> the, the third gorilla. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of gorillas up in here. It's so like a, if you're watching us on YouTube, you're wondering... Wow, these guys color coordinated their shirts today. No, we didn't. Nope. <laughs> nope. So there was no phone call made. We've had eight podcasts, and not one of those times did I ever think that we were going to wear the same stuff. But today, when I grabbed my uh, Eskimo hoodie, I said, as I was putting it on, I said, I hope he doesn't wear the same thing. I don't know why I thought of it. And then when I saw you roll up and you got out of your vehicle wearing the same thing, I just hit my, you know, self in the forehead and said, God. Oops. And then, of course, I could have changed. I'm glad you didn't. Not today. <laughs> wearing it. Yeah, I'm glad you didn't. Yeah. Um, it's a sign that we hang out yeah. way too much. When Which isn't a bad thing. When we wear the same stuff or we have the same stuff. But I can almost guarantee you before we do one of these again, there'll be some phone calls. Like two chicks. Hey, man, what are you wearing tonight? <laughs> Just want to make sure I don't want to wear the same thing. Just don't want to wear the same thing. All right, we're going out, uh, we're going out tonight to uh, get some food. What are you wearing? Okay, I'm going to make sure I don't wear the it's same thing. It's different when we're on location <clears throat> shooting for FA or whatever. Yeah, if we rolled up like this, there's also probably four other people wearing the same thing. Right. But um, so that's a gorilla. The second gorilla is Steven is back. He hasn't been up. in. It's messing with the mic. What's up? He hasn't been in uh, the podcast in a since two, one or two. Yeah, but he's back again. Uh, he's back because it's football day. It is, and he wants to uh, <laughs> watch some football. And um, the third gorilla is. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. We got yeah. food sitting. Uh, you know, why not? You know, just let's. I mean, there's food. That's what I'm about, and that's what you're about. I love it. So it's, it's lunchtime. So that's the third gorilla in the room is why do you have uh, peanut butter jelly chips? Yeah. Yeah, so. the chip thing, I'm, the Cool Ranch chips, I'm really excited for. So, yeah. I've never tried that. When before. we get into it, um, ever since I was a kid, I put. In my peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, I put cool a layer of Cool Ranch chips in the sandwich. So when you bite into that, you get the the peanut butter, the jelly, and then you kind of get like this the zing zing of a cool zesty ranch, ranch like kicked right in your face, and you're like, "Yep, this is where it's at." And it's not much; you just put yeah. like four or five chips. There's a little crunch when you eat it. Yeah, so texture. Yeah, yeah. There's a food tip for everyone. I'm pretty excited. If you it. do peanut butter and jelly uh, sandwiches, try Cool Ranch chips I've on the done inside. Regular potato chips. Oh no! Or this occasionally a, a barbecue chip and in, in just a peanut butter sandwich, but it's this is this is the next level. This is okay. I've been doing it since I was a little kid. Everyone when they were kids, they did weird stuff, you know, ketchup on their mac and cheese or oh. ketchup on their grilled cheese yeah. or mayo sandwiches and weird stuff like that that some kept for their life. Yeah. I didn't do weird stuff like that, but I did do uh, this. And then we got we got the new Oreo. Oh my gosh. Throw this up to the cameras. Cookie butter. Cookie butter Oreos. Now, I uh, every time I go on an airplane flight, uh, usually we do Delta. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, go ahead. And uh, they have these, um, like, they start with a B. I don't know, brisket cookies or something like that. And it tastes like a gingerbread cookie, but it's, oh, yeah. uh, it's a gingerbread cookie cookie. And they're from another country, and you can actually buy them on bulk on like online. Mm -hmm. But you always get that or peanuts or right. like you know pretzels. I always go for the cookies because those are my favorite cookies. And then Haley's mom introduced me to cookie butter, which is the cookie. It's made by the same company of that cookie, but it's just a peanut butter with cookie chunks in it, with the taste of that cookie butter. And you can get it at Walmart. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we were talking the other day about cookie butter and here you go you walk in with or we were talking about these oreos weren't we yeah you said you'd seen them online or i saw them like on that. facebook or something yeah. and i yeah i was like the delish facebook page i think and i saw them and i was like need to have and then god stuff yeah you, <laughs> you brought it and i have already had one and it tastes 
okay. just like it. So the the cookie butter, you can take like a Ritz cookie, a uh, Ritz cracker, or an Oreo yeah. cookie. And I actually have done taking the butter, which is like a peanut butter jar, and I literally scooped my Oreos into it, and it's next level, next level, you know, diabetes. It's awesome. I was going to say Hilltop Studios is now a fitness club. <laughs> Fitting these cookies in our mouths. <laughs> You've been waiting to do that, haven't oh, you? Oh, yeah. I giggled. I, giggled. Oh. Um, I had a tough choice because they also had the um, the apple pie ones, and those are off the charts. Ooh, not It's got the butter. same graham cookie on the outside, and then the rest is like caramel apple in the middle. Ooh, I don't know how that would be. I'd have to be feeling it. Oh, it's so solid. It's solid. What what kind of bread did you get? Is that organic? No, it's not organic. It's oat and nut. It's one hundred and fifty thousand grain. Uh, I don't know. Probably more like uh, twelve forty nine thousand grain. I don't know. It's just some whole grain oat nut. The most important is high. No high fructose corn syrup though. And on the is it got. Uh, it's bread. Enriched. It's bad for you either way. Yep. You got, you got the enriched yeah. one. You know what? We're going to okay, eat it. Okay, let's though. break down your Doritos then. No. <laughs> no. no right. The Doritos go in the sandwich. Right. And then we got some no stir natural creamy peanut butter spread. Yep. Boom. And then Smucker's. This stuff is amazing. It's some. It doesn't have sugar in it. It has honey instead of sugar. Some next level stuff. And we yeah. talked about peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in. It was either 6 or 6.5. So now we're going to make it an 8. Yeah. And we're going to enjoy it. So uh, eventually we'll get that going. But let's uh, duck opener opened up. Um, right when we were finishing 7, it was just about to open up. Yeah. So it's, it hasn't been opened up long. But duck season, um, the waterfall, you know, they're they're out. They're... And they've actually, since it's opened, have had some pretty crappy weather. Way too hot. But it's also been, it's been way too hot for sure, but it's also been kind of rainy, muggy, overcast skies. Yeah, like today is super weird. It looks chilly outside, but you go outside and it is not. It's so humid. It's humid. That it feels hot, but it's really. Do you think that has anything to do with the hurricane weather pushing up? Getting some of their heat pushed up? Yeah, I think that's still some of it. I mean, I have no idea. I'm just it's 68 wondering. degrees, but it feels more like 88. It's weird. I've never, not this late in the fall, have dealt with that kind of humidity. So I've ran into a few people that have limited out 20, 30 minutes, 7-man, 6-man, 5-man. Um, they've taken canoes out to marshes. Um, there's some people staying here at the resort. They're college kids. They... Hard now, these are hunting. obviously local ducks. Oh, yeah. I would yeah, say they're, they're uh, not, nothing's pushed down. I mean, I'm not going to... Don't, don't quote me or anything, and don't be mad at me for me saying this, but I don't think anything's pushed down. Right. I think these are just local ducks that get hit the first weekend, and they're going to be kind of scared for the rest of Their the life. next week or so <laughs> until new fresh ones come in because the fresh ones don't know. Right. You know, um... But yeah, I think it needs to get... Actually, two weeks ago, we had some decently perfect yeah. waterfall hunting minus snow. It was cool. It was windy. It was fally. It was kind of rainy and wet. That was perfect. But Now, these guys, are they getting mostly local mallards? Um, From what I saw, I'm going to go with a very mixed bag. Uh, I'm just going to try and pull up... Um, one person here that I know um, know went out, see if there's any pictures, but um, definitely a mixed bag. Uh, oh, they went out uh, they went out goose hunting. Man, they're getting a crap ton. Nice. Um, but no duck pictures. He, he had it on his Snapchat, though. Um, oh, okay. And I know there was like a blue bill something or other i'm not good at knowing my ducks i know what a mallard is though uh, and a few other ones but uh, there's so many different species of them out there uh but i do know it was a mixed bag from what i saw it was a mix okay a mix of hey, males cool. females and then random of mallards of course and then random 
other ones in there. Puddle ducks. Yeah, puddle ducks. Yeah. I uh, miss duck honey. I, I really enjoyed it. I just, I don't like the taste of them, so I don't, I don't fool with them anymore. So, you know, maybe in episode nine, we can talk about cooking. Um, how to prop, or even right now, I guess, properly cooking. Um, the reason why I said not episode nine is because then I could get a few um, ideas or recipes written yeah, we down. Can save it. Um, but oh, s- sneak peek to next week then. Um, there the or a topic proper ways to cook game meat, ducks, geese, bear, elk, deer, etc. It's a really a positive way to eat it or a negative way to eat it. And then some people, if they have goose or duck, and they're like. They're like, oh my god, I don't like it. It's so gamey, blah, blah, blah. Then I just don't think it was properly cooked right for you to not. There's some people that love the gaminess, but Mm -hmm. there's a way to cook game to not make you feel or taste it in a, I would say, a negative way. I'm all positive about all the ways. I mean, I eat duck, I eat goose. I've done duck and stir fry. Uh, like Asian style. I've done goose in various different ways. Prime you one cook of my it so that it doesn't taste like a duck. Yeah, I mean for for a duck, I know sometimes the longer, if you did like a crock pot style, the longer you cook it, the the better and more tender and more that gaminess is gonna drop out of it. But like venison for deer, something about gaminess. Is good. I don't know. It's venison. It's, it all depends on what they eat. But I know goose and duck you know goose being a little bit more tough or more gamey you, um, would, <laughs> you would think that a black bear would taste like a butterfinger <laughs> from all the junk they eat <laughs> candy uh, and gummy bears i don't know you've made donuts. bear burgers before mm-hmm. and i'm sure you have a great recipe for that i i had bear sausage mm-hmm. the other day and it was it had infused pepper jack cheese in it oh. super good super wet and moist on the inside yeah, it's great. pretty greasy meat but for um for goose, for instance, you know, I I like uh, wrapped in bacon. Yeah. yeah um, I've had uh, Rylander cook me some duck one time, and he had it wrapped in, in bacon. It was pretty good. But let's let's do that yeah, we'll when see. I can get a couple. Uh, so maybe on the next podcast, we'll, we'll get some recipes and some ways to cook. Um, like, we'll do his bear burger. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, I'll do one or two recipes on goose, one or two recipes on duck, and um, my favorite venison for deer it's gonna be just steak is yeah, how cool. i prefer it but that'd be cool um we'll we'll do we'll do a few of that for the next episode so if you're interested on gamey fish and we can also or gamey uh meat we can also do something on a few different ways on how to cook fish oh absolutely. so we'll do fish and game meat for the next episode and we'll talk about um, different ways to cook them different ingredients different styles and we won't get super nerdy with it Mm-mm. Um, but we'll we'll just drop a few a few trials. So if you go goose hunting, you can maybe try, you know, I do a um, jalapeno cream cheese bacon wrapped on the grill type type deal for goose. So that that's just we need to you know, co- we need to stop talking about. This we'll get into like some of that. Jelly sandwich is like looking really good right now. Yeah. Um. Uh, so that's uh, a little bit about um. Duck hunting, we really didn't get into it, but I really don't have much to say because it is fresh. It just opened yeah, up. Very early. Um, since last episode, nothing's really changed for, um, for for goose hunting except for I've seen a lot of 30, 40 kills at a time. So, you know, it's still the same as what it was last podcast. Uh, awesome. Mm-hmm. Goose, goose season is still awesome. I haven't really seen any um, bow hunting for deer. I still see trail cam pictures, but I haven't seen too many people holding up some deer. A couple. Um, and then bear, nothing's changed since last podcast from social media, my yeah. social media aspect. Um, but ducks has just started, so I don't really have much to say except for I have seen people doing great. The weather's an on and off mystery for if it's good slash not yeah. good. But some people have been doing good with ducks. So maybe depending on how other casts go, it might come back up as another topic. But there isn't really much to say on yeah. on the ducks, except for I did want to bring it to the attention that duck season has started yep. up here. So, and that uh, does does duck season close down for a couple weeks, and then start back up? I can't remember. It's been so long. I think since goose I got... season does. Man, it's. I used to know when I was uh, five years ago when I was 
avidly hunting ducks and geese here. I believe there is a time that there's like a two week break. I think so. Like it, it goes from now until and then it starts back like the up. middle of October and then it shuts down for a couple of weeks. And then at the end of October for the next couple of weeks after that, you can hunt. I think I'm not real positive. Um, I know we wanted to, um, thank God they're not looking to us for information, right? <laughs> This is so true. <clears throat> we just bring entertainment or try to. Um So we have um uh let's see here trying to log in. While you're doing that, um did I did we talk about my buddy uh at work Spencer and his personal best muskie that was caught on Thursday? No, we did not. Oh. Because we recorded uh, the last podcast. I was right after work. I'd lock my keys. Here's this story. I'd lock my keys in my Jeep at work. Spencer hung around. We used his AAA card to get me unlocked for nothing. And uh, it took him a while. The, the tolling company get there. Got me unlocked. We come up here. And then I think we were doing the podcast. And I got a text. And it said, thanks for the karma. I got the queen. No, uh, Spencer's a musky hunter, so I know exactly what he's talking about, the queen. So he got a big fish. Go to work the next day. He got his personal bass musky out of Lake Bemidji. It's all great you know, fishery. 56 and a half inches Oof. by 26. That's a good musky. That is a big. For anyone that doesn't musky. know, Bemidji is uh, oh, like a, I would say, a world renowned. Musky it's fishery for at least state of Minnesota wise, it's awesome. Musky waters. I'll send you that picture there so you can add it to the. To the add YouTube. it to the, yeah. He people people got to see how big it is. He was just jacked, and so that Thursday night, I said, "Hey, I think we should go get a beer and celebrate your personal best." And it was one of those nights where it was supposed to be a beer, yeah, and it wasn't a beer. It was more than yeah. a beer. So both of us were looking a little green Friday at work, <laughs> but it was totally worth it. Uh, I got to hear the story. It, he caught it right beside the boat on a bucktail. He said that la- the battle lasted maybe 15 seconds. It was in the net. Pictures, boom, released. That's awesome. Those musky guys. We got to get. We got to get a musky guy in here just to just to talk about it. They're the way they go about things. It's just it's super interesting. Hmm. Like, it's all about the fish. Get it in, picture, measure, quick release, make sure that... Well, it's the same with, like, the northern or any big fish, a sturgeon, same thing. You want to properly take care of a big beast like that. Yeah. It needs to properly not be out of the water very long. Don't gill it, et cetera, et cetera. You want to take take uh, pride in it. And the longer a big fish like that's out of the water, the, the worse it's going to be yeah. swimming those, away. And those big fish just do not handle stress well. No. Um, They're big. Yeah, and they're big just, people don't handle stress. They're not well being used to being handled. Um, but the other, the, the thing that I respect most about these musky guys, and I should adapt the same mentality to my fishing, but I just for some reason I don't. These guys go like Spencer goes out every day, and he told me not that long ago it's been months since he had a fish in his boat, hmm. and he goes out every day. Hardcore. I can't last an hour without like okay. These aren't biting. I'm going to find something else that is. Or go to another. I, I mean, or go to another Yeah, lake. we've been on multiple times where me and you have fished, and you're like, you know what? This isn't working. Let's go to another lake. Right. No, the musky guys just keep pounding. Keep pounding. You know. And uh, they, they are. They hunt big, giant fish, and that's what it takes. Just straight up dedication and, like, don't break away from it. Stick with it. It'll happen. Dedication. And, uh, hands down, he got his personal best. 56.5. Well, said, well, what's next? Him. Yeah, I said, well, what's next? And he's like, I don't know. I said, what do you mean you don't know? 57, dude. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. 57 and <laughs> higher. You got to beat the beat it again. Yeah. Well, um, that's awesome. That's uh, congrats to him. It's a it's a great musky fisher up here. So to be able to log into a giant is just like those bass, those kids for the bass uh, masters yeah. for the college series. They were here. They were pulling up uh, big muskies as well. I remember one of the kids was staying here, and he his mom showed me one of the pictures. I said, 
that's a huge fish. <laughs> like that right there. I know you're here for bass, but that's that shot right there of that that bat, uh, muskie he was holding up is a world class muskie. Yeah. And um, the guy's like, yeah, yeah, it's a it was a huge one, but we're here for something else. I'm like, I get it. The other cool thing about Spencer's fish was it was a team effort. You know, he's fishing with his roommate. He lives in a in a house in Nymore with uh, three or four other musky guys. That's it. That's all they do. They work in musky fish. Mm. I call it the house of a thousand bucktails. They just got a ton they're, of they're, tackle. Yeah, their their garage is lined with it. They're, it's all over in their house, I guess. I've never been inside, but I've been to to the house before. But mm. uh, it was a team effort, and his buddy was right there with the with the cradle with the net. Got him unhooked. I mean. They took pictures together. It's crazy. You know, there was no, oh, man, that, that should have been my fish or that. I put in more out. No, it just total team effort. Total team effort. Yeah. It's awesome because that's, I mean, over 50, 50 is a, that's a good fish. Yeah, his roommate, Nick, who I asked if he'd want to come on here, he's like, no, he's like super under the radar, dude, but he's a musky guru. I can't remember. I want to say he's got 50 fish this season over 50 inches. Hmm. He just doesn't share them or talk about them. He just fishes. Some people, yeah, some people are like I that. I know a handful of guys in town like that are totally under the radar. They want nothing to do with social media posting, letting people know, right? Et they have their own. They have their own agenda, and it's pretty cool. It's very cool. It's good. It's a good fish. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe we'll have Spencer come up here and talk about it sometime. Yeah, have them. Hey, and you. Span. Shout out Always to Always welcome. So we've talked about a little bit about ducks, slash there really wasn't a whole lot to talk about. Um, I wanted to get into the musky thing because of the ducks. You know, muskies eat ducks. This is true. So this I'm is like, true. Uh, so talked a little bit about that awesome musky, but what do you want to hit for? Well, since it is NFL Sunday, I know there's some things that you'd like to discuss about the NFL and today, and I've already seen on social media some posts from friends that are like, I've decided I'm going to watch the NFL. <laughs> Some have said, I really want to watch it, but I really shouldn't. So what's going on? Does that have anything to do with football or to do with the whole taking a knee? I think it has a lot to do with the whole taking a knee business. So uh, NFL, uh, we, we, we enjoy watching the games. Um, we got the Vikings fans out there and we also got some packer fans out there Aaron Rodgers is on my fantasy team steven <laughs> uh but um uh yeah so you also play fantasy football and you're getting into that for the first time you're getting kind of getting into it right well this would be a uh, third season with my family oh, third it's season just a with fun the family. league um so it really gets you more involved in the NFL and caring gives me about the to games do on yeah. Thursday night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, Vikings are one and one as of right now, but of course there's a game going on right now um, mm -hmm. or starting soon, and then also uh, I think the Packers are one and one, and uh, Bradford is out after the first game. Mm -hmm. So this will be now the third, uh, the second game he hasn't been in. Uh, which is kind of a, a Minnesota tradition, I think, to um, start out strong and then have something just fun, just you know, drop right in the middle of the the whole football team. You know, like here's your here's your quarterback wins the first game, decently good game, and then like sprained his ankle or whatever it was. Um, I think it was a leg injury. Do you know? Yeah, Steven said yes. So okay, so he knows. He's the man. Yeah. Um, he's our fact checker. Yeah. He uh, just, he's got his phone. He's fact checker. And I think he's out for like six weeks or something. Something Steven? like that. Yeah, it's, it's four to six weeks. Four to six weeks. Whenever he feels better, he's playing. Whenever he feels yeah. better. But this will be the second game without. Um, so he has a previous ACL injury, so it doesn't exactly help. So he has a previous ACL injury. So, um, uh, and then, uh, so he's out and. Then the Packers are also playing a team that their quarterback's out, so it's a, a weird thing. But you have Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback, and yep. and I have Derek Carr too sitting on the bench and just chilling. Been really, really wanting to play Derek Carr, but the Packers. What I've been learning, the Packers are playing what Cincinnati, Bengals. Yeah, the Bengals. And I, I what little I do know about the NFL, I know that the Bengals are not a good team, <laughs> and I it, think it's just going to be like a. Aaron Rodgers grab bag like 
how many touchdowns can he throw today? I think the Bengals are one of the worst this year, and they are the first now, team to never with that score. Being said, I'm not going to try to. I'm not going to try to hate on the Vikings because I well, one. I really don't like football, but I, I'm proud to that the Vikings are my home team. That's fine, but classic Vikings was always okay. We're playing. This should be an easy win. We're playing the worst team in the league. And then, like, whoa, what happened? 43-7. We just played the worst team in the league, and we just lost. You think that's going to happen with the Packers? Going in overconfident. I have no I business don't, talking I don't, about this. I, I, don't even know if, I don't even know if they're going to go in confident. I, a game is a game, and anything could happen. Um, just so happens they're playing a shitty team, but that doesn't. That doesn't mean that the Bengals can't win. Right. But they are playing the Packers, so. Yeah. If they were playing the Vikings, it would be like, uh-oh, no quarterback. What's the game going to be like? Both quarterbacks are <laughs> in a different situation. But yeah. I don't know, I, who are the Vikings playing, Steven? Tampa Bay. Buccaneers. Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. They, um, we're up 7-3 right now, by the way. Oh, live update, up 7-3. Um, live for the moment. Yeah, live for we'll a live week. Next week. <laughs> a week and a half out. Um, so, I was just about to say they're playing the Buccaneers. They might actually win. I don't. Yeah. Well, it's a fifty-fifty. Every game's fifty-fifty. You don't know. Most points wins, right? Like At the end of the clock. Just think of <laughs> how the Packers played their last game for their one and one. So their their loss, absolutely terrible. Aaron Rodgers threw an interception. I think there was a fumble. Like that's just not usually them, right. but it was it, whatever it happened, and then I saw all these you know Vikings fans, Aaron Rodgers sucks, Vi- Packers right. suck, all that good stuff. You know, like they're getting something out of the that's deal. That's the thing that I like about football the most is the, you you know if you're watching it at the bar, everybody in there is a you know 18 time Super Bowl champion coach. Oh yeah, from the bar stool. Uh, yeah. Oh, what the hell kind of play was that? You don't run that. You don't run that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like then, they're playing and the then game. The social media aspect of it, you know, like you said, uh, Aaron Rodgers throws an uh, interception within half a second. You'd be like, oh, here comes a dozen Aaron yeah. Rodgers sucks memes. Can't wait. <laughs> like, oh my god, dude. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah, Steven sends them to me. Oh, uh, Steven wow. sends them. Wow. Yeah, I uh, I get the. I get that. Yeah, <laughs> Shit gets yeah crazy. It, it's like I literally, and so, you know, I do the same thing. Like the Vikings, uh, a couple games ago, kicked and of course missed field goal to the left. Another one of those, and I was right away on there. I was like, boom! <laughs> Social media, of course, he missed. You know, yeah. why not add that to the fun? But so to wrap it back to when we first started the the f- football talk here. Um, the taking the knee thing. Yeah, I just checked uh, on my, my Facebook feed, and, yeah, there's screenshots of players kneeling, and people are... So there was a London game. Steven, fact check. Who was it? Yeah, this is Martin. No, who was, who was playing the... Oh, it was the Jigs and... Seahawks? Maybe? Right. No. I don't remember. So there was a game in London this morning. Of course, by the time you listen to it, it won't be this morning, but... Um, and the whole team was taking a kneel. The Ravens versus the Jaguars, and the Jaguars owner was also, they were like locking arms and they were kneeling down. And I don't know how I feel about that. I, I definitely do what you want to do. Uh, I think they're doing it in the wrong way. I saw this as well, this meme. So you're going to have to screenshot this, or I'll screenshot it right now. So there's this meme that says it's got <laughs> some, some guys sitting down on a couch with a football uh, and a beer or something and watching the game, and it says, this is your every Saturday and Sunday when you watch the national anthem. It's us watching the TV. We're not standing. No. We're sitting down, eating food, all that stuff. And then below it, it's got the Captain America with the American flag. And it says, this is you on social media acting like you're the biggest um, patriot on this earth. When some football players sit during the national anthem to pro- uh, protest injustice. That's, yeah. I saw that this morning, too, and I'm like, that's kind of good. Burn. But yeah, I don't I don't know how I feel about the whole Now there was a game a, a while ago where a team ran out with police. And they locked arms for the national anthem. I thought that was cool. Um but the whole kneeling down in my mind if you were kneeling down 
um, with like your hand over your heart, that would kind of be respectful. But to sit down, to to kneel and kind of protest, and the, the this is a football game. This is a football game, right? This isn't some Congress thing, and this is their way to to push it out. I get it, but it's just a football game. They're working for the NFL. Um, it's the national anthem, and I think it's disrespectful. But there's some people that. But it can go both ways. I mean, I, I get it, it's but... A, the whole freedom of speech thing is very touchy. And it's one of those things, like, it can be abused. And a lot of stuff is just done out of poor choice. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Well, I think of it as, uh, why get it involved in the sports? But then you say, well, why should we do the national anthem in the sports? And I feel like, well, the national anthem, you're sitting there right before the game... Um, giving thanks to the fact that you can even play football. You know, you're you're respecting the flag that says you can get a $65 million paycheck for playing a freaking sport. You know, I don't think you need to disrespect the, f- the flag or what it is and what it stands for. When you, in a press conference, you, sp- you should be able to speak your mind in a press conference mm-hmm. without getting fined or without getting hurt, but being it okay that you can just kneel down during it is is a big deal i know when i played hockey we came out and uh you know you got your helmet in one hand your stick in the other hand and we didn't put our hand over our heart but we looked up at that flag and we just it's that's that time to just get pumped it's game time and um steven messaged me this morning uh was it a pittsburgh thing yeah pittsburgh steelers possibly so maybe we'll retouch on it after I, this airs i didn't see anything on i just saw that uh i don't think the game started yeah yeah, it's this afternoon. Oh, so this afternoon. this afternoon, which again, when you watch this, it won't be. But the Pittsburgh Steelers right now, there's an article saying that they're gonna sit in the, um, the locker room during the national anthem. They're not even gonna come out for the national anthem. They're gonna sit in the locker room. Now, do we know if this is true? No, we don't. This is just a, a, a l- article that came up, and if it's even a true article, who knows? But I can see it happening just because of how. The last football games have been, and even yeah. ones today. So we'll definitely re-up that when it happens. But just in NFL, it's NFL time. It's NFL season. Everyone's pumped. It's a Steven. it's yeah, a long. Already, I lied. It was a it was a noon game. I thought it was a three game. Yeah. It did happen. They didn't come out. Mm-hmm. That was it. Wow. So from NFL dot com. <clears throat> Brutal. Yeah, just published 20-some minutes ago. All the Pittsburgh Steelers players stayed in the locker room during the national anthem prior to Sunday's game against the Chicago Bears at Soldier Field. I would rather have a quarterback oh. kneeling than a team not. Only the Steelers coaches, including head coach Mike Tomlin and offensive coordinator Todd Haley, Holly Haley, were on the field during the national anthem, but none of the players were. So what does that tell you as a coach? The coach goes out there. <laughs> But your none of your teammates go. Out there. That's super disrespectful. The kneeling thing I can totally deal with because all it is is just social media garbage. But to physically not come out before a game to show not only the the flag, your fans, but the other team respect, community, yeah, super disrespectful. Oh crap! Wow, that's <clears throat> yeah. And but, as a coach, how do you? How do you deal with that? Because I've seen coaches where they, uh, one of their teammates kneels and they punish them. They're like, you're not playing this game. Or, I was going to say, it's one hell of a strong team. Yeah. <laughs> they all did it. I would just, if I was, you know what would be super funny? If they did that and the coach didn't respect it and the coach threw up the forfeit flag. My team doesn't deserve to come out on this field. Wow. That yeah. would be a hell of a thing. You're taking a hit for your, you're taking a hit for your team. Yeah, you really so want to go down this road? You probably don't want to okay, do let's that. let's go down this road. We're not going to play that. Exactly. That's all I would have dealt with it. If you're playing yeah. Bantams or something, your team would come out, right? Oof. Coach would uh, throw the, throw the game. You know, Like we said earlier, you know, like in the NHL, <laughs> over half, 50% of the players aren't even from this country, and they stand for our anthem. They, yeah, they, they live over here during hockey season, and they go home. And they, to they come out. Back to or Finland or Switzerland or wherever. Norway. Totally. Africa. Russia. <laughs> I mean, what sports do you do you see 
you see that it's only football right now. They're the only sports that are. Is there hmm? another? Oh, is it starting in baseball? Baseball. Oh, yeah, I did see that in baseball, too. Just whatever. It's stupid. Uh, whatever. <laughs> That's why I like fishing. Next subject, I'm like off fishing. of the NFL. But yeah. I would say it's NFL season. Uh, hopefully everyone's fantasy football teams are going going good. Hopefully everyone's having a good season. Time to hang out with friends, eat food, and uh, watch some sports. But um, – we will definitely come back on an NFL topic as as it gets going. Same with hockey. At the same time, people, we're, we're definitely not K fan radio. Yeah, no worthy dudes. We'd, no. no, we could care less about it. But it's still once in a while fun to just talk about random oh, yeah. stuff. What's happening? Also, it's NHL season has started. Preseason. Ooh, love me hockey. Minnesota Wild, I think, is already won what, uh, three. I th- believe so. Yes, three wins. So they're three and zero oh. again. This is when we're talking i don't know when this airs what it will be because they play hockey games like left and right but um uh so that's that's good it's 90 90 games regular season hockey yeah. Ooh, i think over 100 is it over 100 i think it it's used to be 90 i believe it's 117 120 something like that hmm. i can well, I know easily find out but um so yeah, it's a it's a lot of games, but it's it's starting to get in winter time, which means cool weather, football, hockey. Um, again, we're not sports people, but uh, awesome I fishing. I love I love Minnesota Wild. I love NHL. I just love this season because it's it's the time of the season where stuff gets a little bit more cooler, and you don't always want to be outside. Or if you do want to be outside, it's totally fine. You're hunting and fishing, but it's starting to get to that time where you know you just you kind of get with the gang and you know you, you eat food you just watch sports oh, yeah. and just have a good old time even if you're out in the boat fishing somebody's gonna bring a radio yeah listen someone's to gonna game. someone's gonna bring the updates like steven he's already updating this on the the oh, viking yeah. game so um so and hockey started and again it's just preseason. there's a long season ahead i mean Cubs it goes all the way June. through winter yeah <laughs> long season so um again we'll probably talk a little bit about yeah. that as well but dude is it peanut butter jelly time or not yet um you can say not yet yeah not yet not yet way yet way yet way yet <laughs> there peanut you go jelly time. um and a baseball bat um, yeah so let's get off of sports let's get back well, to the legit up, you know with with hockey season football season generally cooler weather this is the time of the year that i start well i re- really start fishing hard um but I also, in the evenings when I'm not fishing, I'm conditioning conditioning for ice fishing because I do not have a snowmobile or a four-wheeler. Uh, it's treadmill, walking, treadmill, so not walking. Um, tell me tell me some of the things that you you do um, to pregame into the ice fishing season at, at your age. And like you said, the wa- you have to be walking to your holes um, instead of snowmobile. So you're walking from shore out, et cetera. Tell me a little bit about what you do to condition because I, I was just in Canada, like we said on the last podcast, and it was a day that it could have started to snow and I was not ready for it. I mm-hmm. was cold and we were all cold. And that's also because we just went through months of beautiful weather. And this is the right. first day where we're like, why are we here? It's cold. <laughs> it so how do you prepare for ice fishing season for your body? Uh, for me, um, I, usually, I usually clean up my eating. Uh, I, try, I try to clean up my eating. I continue to drink lots of water. Um, I start taking supplements for my joints because I have arthritis in both knees. Um, I also, I've had carpal tunnel release and ulnar nerve transpositions. Uh, those, if you're a sports fan, you hear pitchers get in the Tommy Johns. They take your funny bone nerve and move it. Uh, it's because my pinkies and, and ring fingers were going numb. So with those surgeries and stuff, my hands get like ridiculously cold really, really fast to the point like I can't even grab the key to turn the ignition if I'm out ice fishing. Now, Steven's been with me and I've had to use both hands to like turn the key. I can't, my fingers won't move. So years prior, well, last year I didn't do this, what I'm about to tell you that I've started doing again. And it really had a profound effect. I, I lost motor function. Years prior, and I'm bringing it back this year, is 
when I'm sitting at home after work, after after supper, watching a movie, I literally will take a bucket, like I have a like a three gallon plastic bucket, and I fill it with ice and I fill it with water and I soak my hands in it. So you're conditioning your hands I'm to con- the cold before the cold Conditioning my hits. hands to freezing water, and I leave them in there and I pull them out when I get really stiff and I just, I try to start. You work them. So it's like uh, th- uh, physical therapy for your hands, yep. getting it prepared, ready to go. Yep. And it's crazy. Cause I, I guarantee I can run into some people that are like, um, and with fish addictions, we just started this, um, two V two health kick. Yep. Right. So, uh, we're doing a competition. <laughs> we got yeah. Oreos and peanut butter yeah. jelly sandwiches. Yeah. You know, it's cheat day. Cheap yeah. day. <laughs> but we're, do- we're doing a <laughs> competition, um, for our staff to do, um, basically get in shape before ice fishing season. Okay. And you can have people that sit there and question, they're like, why for ice fishing or, or fishing in general, why do you think you need, to, like, it's not a sport. Why are you oh. exercising to get into <clears throat> shape or why are you um, getting prepared for the season by doing And la- Last season, we actually did a football training camp fish addictions video. And mm-hmm. that's a YouTube video you can check out. It's just a fun, funny get we you know we're like you know doing at the same time it was an eye opener like wow i am really out of shape and it, fishing is very much a sport when but people get, would question why you condition for it because well, some people might not know they don't fish they don't know what you go through out on the ice well, let's take a bicycle rider you know i i don't ride bicycle but if i was going to start riding bicycle bicycle seriously i have to condition myself for it you know um as much time as as we spend on the water fishing, I mean, it takes a toll on you. Arms, knees, wrists, elbows, back, back especially, even in the boat. You know, you're standing in a boat, waves, you know. It, if you want to perform, you want to get the, the most out of fishing, you have to, you don't have to, but it's a good idea to get yourself in, in better shape. Like I said, I don't walk. Or, I mean, I don't have a I don't have a snowmobile or a four wheeler, and if I can't drive my my Jeep on the lake, then I have to walk. Well, if I haven't been walking and building up my cardio for this, I could have a heart attack walking out on the ice. It's you know, snow is knee deep or mid thigh deep, and you're Which pulling the worst. hundred pounds of gear with you. So you want an easy task. So you want to condition for season, just like it's a sport because. Yeah, like you said, you're walking, you're yeah. you're kneeling, you're getting it's up, you're redu- kneeling yeah. again. It's going to reduce injury. It's going to uh, you'll have more energy instead of just drilling like two three holes and be like, Man, I'm wiped. I'm going to fish right here. You're, you're going to be more productive. You're going to be more willing because you're in better shape to go and explore and and move around and drill more holes and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I, you know, I should continue the same behavior after the ice leaves, but it's. It's like summer is my fat months. Yeah. Like I just get, yeah, you know, I got a boat. I can go float and I'll eat, you know, garbage. In but the I'm, boat. I totally, <laughs> like I totally bear. can see the, uh, but the I shouldn't. open water, six foot waves uh, and you're sitting there fishing. You have to have balance. Yeah. You have to have eye coordination and balance to f- get the feel. So you're not falling into the water. You get into ice fishing season, you're walking, you're drilling holes, you're kneeling, you're standing back up, you're kneeling, you're walking, you're drilling, and you're moving around. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I could see and not then, only the cold, but just the exercise involved. You want to be prepared. How about, how about just running an auger? Oh, yeah. Augers Arm are getting, strength. Uh, augers are it. getting lighter, but they're still 22 pounds. Eskimo's got a new auger coming out. It's, it's 22 pounds, but that's still 22 pounds. Your fishing rod you're lucky if it's three ounces with a reel you know um and here you're you're running this machine that's spinning and it's, it's yeah. jarring and you're cutting through ice i mean you, you should you should try to get in shape you know i've i've pinched a nerve in my shoulder blade before running an auger it sucks i couldn't go ice fishing for a couple of weeks i had to go to a chiropractor which i don't go to chiropractors anymore um i even had acupuncture done i got it straightened out but so fishing and ice fishing conditioning mm-hmm. is very important. Yeah, if if you, you really want to, if you really get into fishing, it's you know I know hunters do the same thing. 
you know, they, they start, they work out all summer long. Oh, especially if you're up in the mountains with breathing. Absolutely. I remember doing an elk uh, thing and you're up in high mountains in Colorado and they say, uh, you need, you should start, um, jogging once a day for the next two months because yeah. you need your lungs to support the, the altitude over yeah. there when you're you walking up mountains. Those, um, oxygen restrictive masks. Oh yeah. So, I mean. There's a conditioning yeah. thing there. If, so if we're me and you were to go, go to Colorado elk hunting, and like in the shape that we're in, yeah. they'd be made. Somebody yeah. be making sausage out of us. <laughs> we wouldn't make it. No, that's <laughs> you know, you uh, know, and it's it, the, it's the same mentality. You know, like oh, I haven't I haven't walked out on the lake since last winter. I can't just go peeling out there. You know, I need yeah. to. So I, I well, just like last year, around. we did that walk-in trip in Michigan. Yeah. We had to walk two miles with gear. Uh, where where's the conditioning for that because you know that's exhausting you're carrying gear out yeah. you know two miles through snow and it's i mean you bring up a good point on conditioning for for fishing some people overlook this yeah uh, and i i think out of everything that we just said in this is don't overlook right pre ice fishing and fishing con- um um conditioning because it's it's something that your body needs and I feel like it's a topic, you know, until you brought it up the other day um, for us to talk about it on the, the, the cast here. I was like, where are you going? Precondition. I'm like, what does, what do you mean? But now that I think of like, okay, yeah. I remember jogging once or twice a day for uh, preconditioning to go up into the mountains. Same thing with ice fishing. You're, you're conditioning your, yourself for walking your knees. You know, it's one of them situations where you might as well throw on the striker gear and, go for a mile walk with all the gear on on a nice cool day later in the year later as as fall gets you know colder and colder i will i mean i live right downtown bemidji and a lot of times like right now i'll just i'll throw a bunch of stuff in my backpack so i have a little bit of weight back there and then um i just start walking you know and like even if it's like oh you know i want to go get uh i want to go get some some groceries you know, just a handful of things. I'm, I'm, I have done it before, where I'll walk from downtown uh, to the grocery store, which is a good, I don't know, three quarters of a mile or more. Get some stuff and then carry it all back. Um, it's hard to do. I like, I like jumping in the vehicle and driving, but the more I walk now, the easier it's going to be on me this winter. And I realize that the people listening or watching are thinking, okay, two unshaped guys are talking about conditioning your body, but. I mean, right now I'm. We're I'm, not talking about like cutting and getting six pack abs, which you know. Yeah, you're just fantastic. getting your body adjusted used and used to the steps that's coming quickly. Right. Uh, right now I'm biking three to six miles a day, uh, switching on and off six miles, then three miles. So the second day I'm not exhausted, mm-hmm. and I know six miles on a bike isn't a whole lot, but it's something that I'm conditioning my legs for, for being out in negative forty five degrees carrying a camera and having to run from hole to hole to videotape right you know an episode and that might be different with me if you're ice fishing and you can just walk you're like there's no rush there's walk well i'm running with camera gear Mm -hmm. in my hand with spikes on my shoes so i don't slip and fall trying to get to a hole in time to catch uh get the whole shot of someone catching fish so that would be conditioning for me so i'm doing three to six miles and trying to get my legs in shape as well as just trying to tighten it up and eating healthy or trying to eat healthy you know peanut butter jelly if i can shave 20 pounds off that means i can get on the ice when it's an inch inch less so instead of waiting for it to get like five six inches that's what i do now i can maybe go out like four or five i want uh you want what um sandwich no oh (laughs) (laughs) no (laughs) say i want the the same thing 20 pounds it would be yeah awesome but it, it it's the little things you know um the little things mm-hmm. in conditioning and uh going back to the biggest reason why we wanted to talk about this was you had the arthritis or whatever yeah. in your hand so you're conditioning your hand and people are like is that helping well man bemidji has a huge sports um therapy complex in bemidji and i've been in there a few times with oliver and you just see the rooms and the people and the conditioning and what they're doing for injuries that they've had in their body. 
And at your age, I'm sure you have had a few injuries that, oh, yeah. you know, you want to take care of your body. So pulling into a season, just like a, a football player, they don't just jump first game. They don't just run out there and they're like, let's do this. Yeah, like this shit last they, year. <laughs> yeah, they did this last year. It's going to be no problem. All season long, they're conditioning. Absolutely. They're, they're, um, they're practicing. In shape. Yeah, and they're in shape. Exactly. And they're still conditioning. Yeah, it's the same principle. And uh, matter of fact, you know, with, with my weird little hand ice bath, bath thing, it worked fairly good the year before and then it just to see if it made a difference i didn't do it last year last year was brutal i'm actually thinking about getting an appointment to talk to a doctor and a physical therapist about what else i could do to keep my hands from just locking up and freezing if there's another uh, surgical procedure i need or if there's some um, additional exercises I could do besides just ice baths. So that's that's the next step here, probably in the next couple of weeks. Training. Training. It all comes down to training, training your body. Yeah. What else, what else we got to talk about? Well, you were about? just talking about the auger. Yeah. I like this uh, this move, the shimmy, 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 shay. That um, <laughs> there's... <clears throat> Well, we're wearing Eskimo stuff, yep, we can talk which we that. did not prep on whatsoever. But um, just a, a few things in the industry. We're besties. Yeah, a few things in the industry that we saw that is new or what we've noticed that's new um, coming up here in the season. Of course, there's so many companies out there that are coming up with new things. Oh, hey, uh, and we'll find out more about this stuff and we'll get into it more maybe at the St. Paul Ice Show mm -hmm. after that where we'll know more about other products that are coming out. And if you've never been to the St. Paul Ice Fishing Show or the Milwaukee Show, uh, which I heard is pretty big, um, it's basically the iCast for ice fishing. Yep, exactly. That's yep. the way I look at and it. And if you don't know what iCast is, that's in Florida, and it's the world's largest fishing convention. All the We're new fishing the products. New but usually ice fishermen don't go there because it's in Florida. Yeah, and well, Florida and Las Vegas switch years, you know, yeah. switches at each year. There has been a little bit of ice fishing stuff released at ICAST, just a little tiny bit. Yeah, there's there. a... But I think, I think for the most part, the St. Paul and Milwaukee shows are the ice fishing. I mean, there's ICAST. no open water stuff for it. No. And ICAST, there's maybe a couple things, Yeah. but there's Minimal. really not much of anything. Um, it's some companies that do a little of both. I know Vexlar went, but they also have open water and ice fishing stuff. So Same it's with 13. Yeah. So it's a little, it's a little yeah. mix. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so I cast that's, uh, you know, like the I cast of, or St. Paul I show is like the I cast of the ice fishing world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, w when that happens, we'll get a little bit more information on new technology or new products that come out. Um, we're not giving any props to any other companies. Um, just that, cause we're with Eskimo, uh, we know a couple of things that are coming out. Um, and the same with like the Markham and stuff like that too, but we are not, we're not going to favor another company. Uh, I, we just don't know what Frable came out with, or at least I haven't looked into it. Um, uh, maybe we should have looked more into it, but we had wanted to throw out a couple new things and we'll talk again, um, yeah. and another one about more things as the ice fishing season goes in. But, um, us being with Eskimo, what's your favorite new product they're releasing? Oh, man. Um, Eskimo, I'm really, really excited for, well, they got two new flipovers. The Grizzly. There's the Grizzly. That's the big boy. I like that one. Yeah. Especially the claw marks in the front. That's yeah, pretty cool looking. Um, square tubing, the tub. <laughs> oh, the motor ro uh, roded or whatever the heck. Roto molded. The thick tub. It's now, we... With fish addictions, we <clears throat> tested that out all last season, yeah. and we beat the crap out of it. I'm talking well, dirt roads, yeah, paved roads. Mike Mike showed me that tub, and it looked like a military same, grade. The same plastic they use for these $400 coolers. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what it looked like. I mean, <laughs> you couldn't even scar it with a with a nail if you wanted to. It's uh, it's like a thick military grade. Like I was gonna put a bunch of guns and weapons in it to protect it because that's what this mm -hmm. is like and <clears throat> yeah they did square square poles um it's a it looks just awesome it's a big shack it's a big one 
definitely a pull with the ATB or snowmobile. Situation. And then they also came out with um, the, an, Sierra. the auger. The Sierra. Oh, the Sierra. That's yeah. a, a new two man. Um, I'm going to probably be running that this year. Um, uh, square, square tubing it comes thermal, non-thermal. Um, the other product I'm super excited about is the, the rocket series. Rocket augers. Yep. They're, uh, I think eight and 10 inch. <coughs> yeah. I looked it up right now. So pounds. there's, um, there's gas and propane. There's an F one eight inch mm-hmm. there, which is again, 22 pounds. Yes. There is the F one 10 inch, which is 24 pounds. And then there's a P one eight inch, which is 26 pounds. That's propane. And that's propane. And then there's a P1 10 inches, which is 28 pounds. Again, propane. So four different versions, two of the same with uh, eight inch, 10 inch bits. And I have not messed with it yet. I have uh, not either. But I am excited to. Usually we would have already messed with it before it came out. Um, So that's, you know, a little different because we didn't. I know that Mike with Fish Addictions has been working hard with that Grizzly. And that's like one that we're super proud of. Yeah. Um, so I can't wait to see the Grizzly in action and just see it. I mean, and of course, like I said, we ran that tub all year and we beat the crap out of it. Yeah. And it is like it's fresh off the thing. I'm talking gravel, dirt roads, you know, some pavement, and it just it's fine. That's Took, the fun thing about being with fish. So you just use the stuff for real, and there's no babying it. I think we did 176 miles or something like that on snowmobile with it last year, and it looks fresh out the box it's it's That's beautiful uh, I, I put camera gear in it all kinds of stuff and it was just rugged um also i uh didn't see it on here but i believe one of the requested things for um ion oh that's because i'm i'm on the eskimo page not the ion page uh, ion i believe they've added a 10 inch yes. bit now people asked for it and they said okay we shall do that for you. Yep. So the ions now have 10 inch holes, which is going to be awesome. Of course, they re- a lot of their products got redone um, when it comes to engines and stuff like that as well, I believe. But yeah, the Sierra, the Grizzly, uh, the Sierra Thermal. That's the one I'm going to be getting. And then um, the 10 inch on the ion and then the rocket augers mm-hmm. for Eskimo. And... Um, the only reason why we knew we know that for those products is because we we do work with Eskimo, <laughs> and uh, we um, it's just Great it's chance. just right on the top of our top of our head. So again, that's just why we wanted to talk about that. But we're excited that we're going to be messing with Markham this year. Yep. And Markham, I'm excited for the RT9. I believe is the <laughs> the name they all got like R two D two. You know all these <laughs> weird stuff. Uh, man, it, they, I wonder if they have an R two. R two D two would be awesome. I'm sure it's copyright or some stupid thing, but RT nine is the tablet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The tablet version. I'm excited as a cameraman. I'm excited to mess with that because of the capability of hooking your phone up to it. Um, It's got like the Android built in, so I, I I'm thinking I can save footage and I can send it. You know, I can hook up my phone and wirelessly send you. Um, you know, if I have a camera. That can right. be hooked to it. I can screen record it or whatever, save the file, and using my phone, I can send it to you if you're sitting on your TV watching right. you know, Netflix or something. You can be like, oh, I'm like, look at the fish we're looking at right now as we speak. Yeah. So as a well, cameraman. I can see you totally pushing the limits of that RT9. Yeah. That plus just the, the, all the capabilities that it has. You got to let and me know if you can put Angry Birds on it. I, yeah, he said you can play games on it. I think Netflix amazing. games and a couple <laughs> things, Hulu, I'll be out there sitting oh, that, in the truck. You're going to be in so much trouble with that. So um, I'm, I want to mess with that from a photographer, videographer standpoint. Um, and we are getting into Markham this year. Mm-hmm. And um, there's just a, f- is there, what do they, do you know of anything? Um, they have new, a new series called the M series. They have the M one, three, and five. Um, I'll be running a three it has a zoom on it. Um, but I think the biggest, uh, the flashes look beautiful. The thing that I'm really excited about 
is the lithium base. So what Markham has done is taken a big lithium battery and basically designed a base right around that battery. And it's housed right in there. There's a charging port for it, so you don't have to unhook it or any of that stuff. It's got two USB ports on it. I was say, it needs to have a cell phone charger. It's got two USB ports on it. It has, on both sides of it, next to the handle, it looked like there's um, threaded holes. It should be quarter 20. That's standard camera mounting threads for tripods and all Mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. It's a very common thread. There's two of those. I believe there's a LED light on the front of it towards the bottom for illuminating your hole. Uh, you're supposed to get uh, 40 hours of use out of this thing. That's crazy. Before it has to be charged. And it doesn't weigh very much either. Um, very cool. Very excited to run that that lithium base. Um, as far as flasher technology goes, um, Marco makes a great flasher. I've never used one. I have buddies that have. Um, about the biggest thing I, I look for in a flasher is zoom. Once I learned how to use zoom... I'm like, man, how did I ever not have this before? So um, I try to keep it simple on the ice. You know, I try not to mess around too much with various settings. I try to keep it pretty simple. But I do like the zoom feature. Well, you talked about uh, the Vexlar that you've been using in the, uh, I think it was 6 or 6.5. And, yeah, you didn't use it to its full capacity. So (laughs) it's crazy. Sometimes there's overload technology. Mm-hmm. And they constantly, every year, they're trying to come up with new things or new updates or new this or new that. And yeah. um, it's only to benefit yeah. the user, of and course. I'll be honest. <clears throat> um, I'm excited for, I think, some of the, the fish addiction uh, team members are looking at, you know, the LX7s and 9s and stuff and 6s. And those are an LCD screen. You know, and it shows the history very much like uh, your open water graph units. Me, I have a psychological hang up with that i just don't there's a delay because the the machine puts out an analog signal through the the transducer that's an analog signal so it's got to come back in that signal that information now has to go through some processors and then a graphics card to draw you a picture where a flasher it's analog analog Mm -hmm. you see it right now and that's just something i have to like either overcome or just be like i'm a flasher dude straight up but i'm excited to give it a try i'll always give it a try and i'm sure somebody on the team will be like yeah come on over here you can try it out and i may love it and i may hate it i don't know but we're going into it blind like this i'm like nope there's a there's too many processes that have to get me that information before i can there should just be a basic mode for you that's why i'm running a flasher there's a flasher yeah. mode. Oh, I saw. But yeah, it I've still seen has that. to draw the picture of the flasher and that kind yep. of stuff. Where a flasher is a mechanical piece. Yeah, it goes uh, around. It's all analog. Yep. Signal. This is all computerized or yep. TV screen style. Yep. Yeah, I've never. We'll just see. Well, yeah, we'll see how it is. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I mean, you're used to a physical uh, you spinning, know, dial. spinning dial. Yeah. This is going to be a, a computer version. Yeah. Um, but I did see uh, Eskimos coming out with uh, a top and bottom. Mm. Oh yeah, they got a they as got well. A suit. They got a suit this year. Um, we mess with Striker, of course, uh, and I, I with Striker, I Striker Ice. I don't believe they really came out with anything new. I think I think they suit wise. Um, I know that they did come out with some new um, clothing, mm-hmm. but suit wise, I think it's the same might this be year some different colors there might like be that. something like that thrown in there otherwise um we're gonna th- you know get more into stuff as that as we start to see it come up and the eskimos as, and as we start getting things because me and you are heading down to eskimo, uh, eskimo here uh, shortly you know yeah in a couple weeks we're going down and picking up some product and Maybe I'll film a little bit of that for the cast, but I probably will film a little bit of that for Fish Addictions as well. But um, as new stuff comes out, like this Eskimo, they just released this within the last week and a half, mm-hmm. all, all this new product. So as we get into ice fishing season, more stuff will get released. We'll try to update you on more stuff. And same with going to the St. Paul Ice Show. We will... Um, yeah, I want to talk to you about that. I mean, we're going to be busy between 
the Fish Addiction's booth, the Eskimo's booth, maybe even 13's booth, Striker's booth. You know, we're going to kind of be all over the place, but it would be kind of cool to hopefully get our microcast thing under control, like figured that out. Like, because, man, we have a lot of friends down there. It'd be like, hey, dude, come over here. You know, we're going to do a 10 minute podcast with you. We should bring some of the cameras, some of this stuff, and set it up in the hotel room and get a couple oh, coming. That'd be a great idea. Coming through as well. I'm just, I'm flashing back to that. Were you a big Office fan? Yeah, I watch all of the Office. You remember when they're at that, um, at that big paper show and Michael Scott's going to have the party in his room? He's got the. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know Is that talking? the one when no one came? Yeah, when no one came except Jim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. He was all about partying. Yeah, yeah, that, that just kind of flashed through my head. Um, so for um, for for new gear, like I said, St. Paul I show more stuff will come up, and we'll we'll get more stuff as as they release it, as companies release it. Some companies don't release much of anything new; some do. So we'll get into that more as um, the time goes on. So we talked about NHL, we talked about NFL, we talked about um, duck season starting. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, pre-ice fishing conditioning as well as slightly open water conditioning just to get your mind and body ready. Mm-hmm. We also talked about a few new pieces of gear with like Eskimo and stuff like that um, with like... 10 15 minutes left what's is there anything else that you want to well i mean we do have man we could talk about fishing and hunting apps but that could that could probably go over 20 minutes for sure yeah for sure how about you steven is there anything uh you want to add in give us an update on what's going on in the sports world vikes are up 14-3 vikes are up 14-3 nice that's so there's irrelevant that. information, but it's still like, hey, all right. Sports, sports world. Sports yeah. world. Did, um, you, did you eat that cookie yet, Stephen? I ate the icing. What? Not the cookie. Part. Ate the icing, not the cookie. Do you cookie. not like Graham? Not right now. Oh, okay. The icing was delicious. Okay. The icing was mm-hmm. delicious. Threw the other one away. Oh. Um. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I think. That was a quick quick little cast. Well, it? it's, we did now a little over an hour. Yeah. Um. We, we kind of got on the start of, we talked, you know, getting into the Ducks a little bit, but we kind of went for a good little bit on the NFL and the NHL, which is fine. You threw a little something different in there. It's, yeah, it, it is, is what it is. is. Um, Touche. Boom. We also, if you didn't follow 6.5, oh, we are giving yeah. away some tackle with um, from Bob Boland. He's going to send us some more. And if you want to also... Uh, throw up that um, ice strong. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh Matt. So with with Matt with ice strong, he sent us some. I'll get one of each color. Some spring bobbers, and um, we're eventually gonna give you know some spring bobbers away. We're gonna give some stickers away. We're gonna yeah, keep giving away. We're gonna give away some of our gear. Uh, you just gotta keep following us. Um, last episode we gave away the fish addictions hat. Hey, we'll dude. probably give away the. Should we give away a peanut butter jelly sandwich with Cool Ranch nope, chips on it? Then we have to actually like give it to someone. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a great gift to get in the box next day air. It'd be an expensive sandwich, but it'd be so funny. <laughs> next day, keep it cool. Put a right. couple of ice. Pack and dry ice. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's um, kind of a podcast eight. Uh, it w- wasn't the – sometimes it's good to just – have a, a episode like this where it's just more kind of chill relax and not hardcore pumped with a lot of a lot of different things so we talked a little bit about some new ice fishing gear we'll keep more up to date with that talked a little bit about the preconditioning for ice season then we just talked uh, about some random stuff like mm-hmm. sports yeah. and a little update on the ducks of course well there really isn't much to update on that but i think honestly what everyone's waiting for is the peanut butter jelly time should we do it? I think to close out this episode, you can make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Steven, you want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Yep. Oh, did yep. you hear that? Jelly yep. just popped. Steven wants a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So what we're doing here is... Nice sound effects. So um, we thought it'd be fun to make uh, some food 
Uh, one, because we're hungry. And two, right. because we're weird. And yeah. I don't know why we're even adding this, but I think it's awesome. So we got some plates. We got, uh, give me, let me see that jelly. So we got Smucker's Fruit Honey, Natural Sweetened with Honey. Yep. Strawberry Fruit Spread. And yeah, looks legit. So, I oh, like look at this. Bit. Zero fat, zero sodium, zero protein, 3% carb or 9 Nine grams. grams and sugar is eight grams and that's probably a little bit of the honey 35 calories it's good stuff and then we have um some eight gram protein no high fructose uh corn syrup bread yeah. uh tons of grains Which on it so if, if this is if if you're listening to this about lunchtime this is a perfect time for you to take your lunch break as well because we're yeah taking our lunch break and then to top it off, I wish Mitch Hedberg was here right now because I got that. We got Doritos, Cool Ranch, Double bag. and um, are you a heel man? No, I okay. am not. So please don't give me that. Okay. Uh, my uh, my recipe for this, like we've already said, is uh, piece of bread, peanut butter, jelly, whatever your favorite jelly is. Today we're going with strawberry, and then a thin layer of Cool Ranch Doritos. On the inside, if you've okay. never had it before, you need to try it. Uh -huh. It's awesome. I'm gonna start getting stuff opened <coughs> up, and, uh, and then we're gonna finish it off with dessert, which is a cookie butter Oreo. Remember, getting in shape for ice fishing. <laughs> yeah, remember, guys, <laughs> you're getting in shape for ice fishing. And this is, um, yeah, a lot of calories, but this is a limited, limited time only, limited edition. I just keep telling myself I haven't eaten yet today, so yeah. <laughs> I haven't eaten either, so this is breakfast slash lunch. Um, but that's pretty much a wrap on on episode eight. So I'm glad that you guys still go. You keep making it. Don't you stop. Don't I stop. Okay, I'm going to yeah. stand up, though. Cause. So, um, yeah. How do we end this? Hit stop. Hit stop. All right. <laughs> We're gonna make sandwiches. finish. Yes, everybody knows how to make a peanut butter jelly sandwich. It's just we'll, yeah. we'll look to our Facebook page for professionally done photographs of our sandwiches. No, we're gonna do some. Reviews. We're gonna do some cell phone shot. Yeah, that's we'll do some cell phone photos. Just like that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, joking with the million freaking apps that you have. Yeah, I've now like, added since last episode. I have now added a few more apps to my collection uh, based on just me wanting to add them and here they are they're photo pills photo pills tells you a few different things um tells you where the sun is where the sun sets um that kind of stuff awesome for physical photographies but not for photographers but not for cell phone photographers uh i downloaded rays i downloaded darkroom and i downloaded lens distortion so those are a few more apps to mess with. I think one or two of them you do have to pay for, um, but I just was messing around with messing around with a few more things. But we will um, wrap up podcast eight, and I'm, we're gonna drop a clip right at the end showing the awesome sandwiches. Um, my name's Aaron, and I'm Patrick. I'm Steven. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and he's Steven, and this is. The Broken Line. It's kind of a really awesome name, right? The yeah. Broken Line. You're talking about fishing, but when the line breaks, man, shit just gets unreal. Yeah!